Hello, it's me Harley, back at it again for yet another video. And today I am going to be talking about a webtoon which I think needs far more recognition. Before I begin, I want to get this point across. I am in no way sponsored by webtoon, the app, or the company, or anything like that. I have 37 subscribers. Nobody is going to be sponsoring me for anything because they will get zero profit out of it. I am literally just fangirling because I don't have enough people to fangirl with. The webtoon I am going to be talking about today is the one that goes by the name I Love You by Quimchi. I think that's how you pronounce a name. I don't know. I've said this in other videos before. I am bad at names. Sorry if I butch up the names to death. Okay? Expect that throughout the rest of the video. I Love You is about a character called Shin A. Yu. She is absolutely adorable and probably the most relatable character I have ever come across ever in any form of literature, in any form of cartoon, in any form of film, just anywhere at all. Let me just describe her to you. She is an introvert who's obsessed by food and sleep, is extremely loyal to her friends and family and is probably just a living meme. In fact, so many images from this webtoon can be used as memes. She's like a meme queen, let's put it that way. The only way you can get her to socialise is probably the only way you can get me to socialise and that's by enticing her with food. I am not kidding you, her two best friends really early on in the story try to convince her to go to a party. The socialising aspect doesn't work. The coming out with your friends things doesn't work. The way they convince her to go is by telling her about the food that'll be there. Yeah. Girl, I am on your level. Stuff me friends, stuff socialising. I'm there for the food. One of the things I love about Shanae is she's a very realistic tomboy character. As a tomboy myself, I can completely sympathise with this girl. She isn't exactly the word feminine, <laughs> let's put it that way. Her and femininity don't really get along well. I mean, she is female. She can be feminine if she wants to be, but she's just not very good at it and opts out if she's got the opportunity to. Watching Shine walk in high heels is something that all tomboy girls can relate to. <laughs> I'll give you a clue, she can't walk in them well. A big character flaw Shine has is her fiery temper. She has got very strong emotions and she wants people to know what they are. She is not the kind of person who will sit back and just let things happen with a laissez-faire attitude. She's not the person who will just sit back and let somebody she loves be slandered. She will put up with tons of stuff thrown upon her, but throw it upon somebody she cares about. She will come out as a strong warrior and tell people exactly what she thinks. Not caring really about the consequences and where that could lead. So many of the characters are just so wholesome. I'm not kidding you, this webtoon is like Fruits Basket level of wholesome. Every single last one of the main characters you want to pull in under your wings and just go, everything will be alright and sort out their issues. Because that's another thing with the characters. None of them are perfect, all of them have their own little flaws. I Love You is a comedic romance. A bit like Fruits Basket. I've said in other videos before, I am not a romantic comedy fan, generally. I am very much more into the side of horror, gothic, psychological, all that jazz. You wouldn't believe it, 
considering some of the videos I've posted recently. But it's not every day Fruits Basket comes back from the dead like the romantic comedy messiah of anime. It's just coincidence that I'm talking about two romantic comedies at the same time. That is a very, very, very rare situation for me to be in. Our main character, Yu, is in a reverse harem, but it's not one of these like really cheesy, stereotypical, like, oh my god, can you just stop it with the harems already type of story. She has three people who all have a liking for her. The top two main love interests are brothers. However, don't forget about the third one. The third one shouldn't be forgotten, he's precious. We'll start with the older brother. The older brother is called Kosuke. Now, the family that they are in is really high up, top class, like business people who are in the top tier of just society. And Kosuke has been brought up in a way so then he will inherit the family's business. This has left him to be very stiff, very upper class, doesn't eat burgers because they're below him kind of man. And generally, he's kind of an ass. <laughs> at least at first glance. Our main character, for a large chunk of the story that's written so far, and in fact, even right now, thinks of him as pretty much a royal ass. He is the kind of person to look down on you for just about anything that isn't in his mind above board. However, we are seeing sides to him that prove that actually he does have feelings. This cold exterior type thing, this kind of like Sunday cold exterior isn't all that he is. Personally, he's my favourite. In my mind, he's best boy. Now, I don't ship people with anything. I am not a shipper. I don't do all that jazz. To be honest with you, I couldn't care less. But even I find it difficult who I want you to be with out of the people she's got. <laughs> because I like all the characters. I think if I was forced to choose, I'd choose Kosuke, the older brother, simply because I think he's gone through the biggest personality change and development in the webtoon so far. If I had to choose a song with him, I'd probably choose Gasoline by Halsey. Then we go on to his younger brother, Noel. Noel is basically the complete opposite of Kosuke. He's been brought up in a rich family, however, he's not been brought up to be the one to inherit the business. He's more normal. He's more sociable. That's led him to go on and make friends. He actually has gone out and lived a semi-normal life making friends and socialising, which is something that his older brother hasn't got. His older brother hasn't really got a friend in the world. He's got a couple of like work colleagues that he talks to and he's got a kind of mini stalker problem with a girl who likes him, but there's no one close to him. Noel has a bit of a friendship group and he's a bit of a social butterfly. He likes to get into pranking and having fun. He, you will see him at parties and while he's there, he's the friend that would most likely get you in trouble while you're at the party. He'd convince you to do something which is probably not the best thing to do. However, this personality has led to problems because he is from a rich family and he is very much in the public light. It has led to a lot of slander and a lot of negativity around him. He isn't coping very well with it. The song I think would best fit Noel's personality is The Judge by 21 Pilots because he is going through quite a lot of issues but is putting on the face of I'm coping, which is just making him suffer. Finally, we move on to Yu's final love interest. Now then, out of the three of them, he's the only one to have admitted his feelings for her. And to be honest with you, 
I think he's the only one who actually realises he has feelings for her at all. The other two are pretty oblivious to the fact. And the third person is a German immigrant by the name of Dieter. Dieter is a precious thing. <laughs> he's a normal guy. He's not from a rich background like the two brothers are. And honestly, he's just sweet. He's rather shy. He's a bit bumbling. He has a few issues of his own. For instance, because of his parents' jobs and things, he never stays in the same place very long. And that's led him to feel rather uncomfortable with making friends and a girlfriend. He knows he likes you, he's admitted it to her, but at the same time, he's uncomfortable with the fact. And we see that through his kind of awkward exchanges with her. Dieter, the best song I could put with him is Hold Me Tight or Don't by Fall Out Boy. <laughs> I think he's underrated. And you, I don't think she really knows how to feel about him. Out of the three of them, I don't think you re is really interested in any of them. <laughs> if anything, the person she's shown most interest in is actually the brother's dad. <laughs> so, lol. <laughs> I think if you had a song, it would be probably F You by Lily Allen. <laughs> You just goes through life working her ass off, trying to do her very best and in return gets so much rubbish thrown at her. And I think for the majority of the time she's just like, I don't care anymore. Just let me sleep, let me eat and let me just be in comfy baggy clothes. Let me just avoid the world. How have I managed to be dragged into this social situation? So yeah, I've got most of my fangirling out of the way now. I've told you a bit about the four main characters. You does have two very, very good friends that are regular appearances in the webtoon as well. And again, they are really nice people. It's a lot of really charming characters together and it leaves you going now then who do i want her to be with in the end <laughs> it isn't like an all one high school host club situation where you're like with how he's like oh yeah she's going to be with tamaki it's very much a case of all three of her potential love interests are just adorable i don't think it's going to be theater Statistically speaking, I'd say it's most likely going to be Noel, but it may not be. With the way it's going, I think she has about a 60% chance of ending up with Noel, about a 40% chance ending up with Kosuke. That's what I think. But you never know. As I said, it's hopefully going to come off hiatus soon, and we're going to continue the story. It might change around entirely, and suddenly the least likely theatre of all of them is going to come out top trumps. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. All I can say is I'm super excited. I relate to this dirt face girl so much. In the meantime, I'm probably going to end up reading it yet again. I think this will be like my third or fourth time. <laughs> I genuinely don't know why people aren't talking about it. It's probably because it doesn't have the most overwhelming drama shock value. It's not like, oh my god, somebody's just been decapitated. Oh. And it's not like, oh my god, my favourite character just died. Oh. Sorry, I'm now just thinking about Attack on Titan and one of the recent chapters and I'm feeling a bit bitter now. I shouldn't have thought about that. <laughs> Just somebody out there, please read I Love You, then come back to me and like post something on Instagram saying, hey, I've watched it. Can we fangirl together? <laughs> I'm one of those people now. <laughs> on that note, toodle pipple beans. My face when a new chapter of I Love You comes up.